Oh yeah. Non working training days. All about socks and sandals. Right then. Let's go do some deadlifting. Alright, so today I want to talk about RPE and your expectations. And it ties quite nicely in with being injured. So I've spent a lot of my time being injured. Um, and when you head into the gym, you want to try not to have that thought in your mind of what you could do. And instead focus on what you can do right now. So it's very easy when when you're coming back from injury to go, oh, well, I used to do X for this many reps and, and now I'm like 20, 30 kilo behind it. You need, to, you need to forget that. Forget what you could do. Let's focus on what you can do right now. And it's the same with RPE. So you want to be able to do X number for X reps. But in reality, it might be an RPE 9 or 10. And it's a very similar story with RPE. So you might say, okay, I want to do 140 for 5. And that's a projected RPE of 8. And you head in, you do your set of 5. You work on your second set and you're starting to grind. And if it's getting closer to like a 9, 9.5, you know, and you're thinking, I might even only make 4 on my next set. Is it worth pushing through that and then not recovering enough for the subsequent sessions or even the next few sessions so sometimes it'd be quite important to like let go of what you could do and focus on what you can do right now um that's something that i've learned through being injured and when you spend some time training with rpe you will come to terms with that come to terms with it it's quite a morbid way of saying it that's 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 not the right way let's pretend i didn't say that bit <laughs> I'm heading to do some deadlifts. Uh, I've hopefully got quite a few of the guys, a um, few of my online clients coming in to meet me. We're all just going to hang out, have a training session. Um, I think most of those guys are doing squats. But yeah, I'm going to hit up some sumo. Yeah, so uh, as I said, a few of us are going to be taking over this morning. Yeah, we're going to have all these rats down here. Mark, say hello, dude. Uh, hey. hey. All right. Uh, Bill, don't be squatting. <laughs> Mark Edison, and I'm going to grab this right here. Well, some sumo technique. Uh, so, the thing with deadlifts is you don't have the eccentric phase or a lowering phase like you do with a squat or a bench press. So, you don't create that tension. So, you've got to try and create it your own way, right? So, you'll see when I go and do this, I'm going to shoot my hips up, get a pull on the hamstrings, dip down with the hips, boom, and then I'm going to drive. So, that's going to be the equivalent of lowering like you would on the bench, or coming down in the squat. Let's do it. This crazy dude just had a BB of 190. Didn't let me know. Didn't video it. Didn't really happen, sir. Didn't really happen. <laughs> so, in a previous video, you might have seen that uh, I've shown an exercise barbell hyperextension. And uh, how we talk about how thoracic tightness is often where somebody will fail on a squat. And here is a perfect example. Come on, Phil. Get up. <laughs> oh, Phil. This close. This close. How are we going to fix that? Well, front squat is going to be a really good thing. Um, because the amount of pressure is going through your thoracic. Um, so, Phil's definitely going to have some front squats in the next cyclist program. Sorry about that, Phil. 
Um, but we'll probably go with using the safety bar, mate. So, that's it from me today. Um, next session, I think I'll be heading in for some pull squats. Uh, and then I've actually got some front squats later in the week, so that might be a good opportunity to get some more video in done.